Hello everyone, welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. Today we are going to be taking a look at the female reproductive system, specifically the female reproductive tract, as well as its major associated structures. So to get started, let's take a look at this model on the left, where you can see kind of an external view from the inferior perspective of the groin and pelvic region. So to orient ourselves, let's look for a few structures, even though it's a little bit hard to tell these are the two thighs, meaning that between the thighs, this is the groin region, and this is where you'd find your pubic symphysis covered by, or yes, covered by your mons pubis. So your mons pubis is kind of like a fatty pad on the anterior side of the, of the pelvis. We'll see that a lot more clearly on the other model, but for now, this is the mons pubis on the anterior side. This is the butt. So given that this is the butt, this is the posterior side, and Related to the butt, there's a couple more things that you can look for as well, such as some digestive structures. So here, this would be your anus or your anal canal, surrounded by your external anal sphincter. You do have an internal one as well, but in this case, you can see the external. But lastly, one more structure I'd like to point out is this very broad muscle right here. This is called the levator ani muscle. So the levator ani muscle is going to be kind of like the very bottom of the pelvis, making up what's called the pelvic floor. This is going to be actually made up of a few muscles, but all we need to know is that this very broad muscle is levator ani. But with that said, let's actually start taking a look at the female reproductive structures from here on out, where you can see a couple of those structures up here anterior to the anal sphincters and the anus. And the first one that I'd like to point out really quickly are these little flaps of tissue. So do you, do you see these little flaps, or rather lips? These are called the labia minora. So labia means lips, minora means smaller, or at least smaller relatively. Like these are the smaller lips, while well, we will have larger lips that will be surrounding them as well. But for now, you can see the labia minora, which is going to be enclosing this space called the vestibule. Inside of the vestibule, you'll have a couple of openings, and there's one more structure, or a couple more structures that we can relate to it. The first of which is this one right here. So at the anterior junction of the labia minora, you can see this small little structure right there. It kind of likes, looks like a small little button-like structure. This is the clitoris. So the clitoris, a relatively easy structure to find here, this is going to be a structure that is highly sensitive, and it is actually going to be related to female orgasm. So, well, obviously everyone's different, but like in many cases, the clitoris, when stimulated, can be related to orgasm. But just to be clear, like this is kind of like a structure analogous to a male reproductive structure, which is the head of the penis or the glans penis. So both of which have a lot of neuro, neural endings, a lot of sensitivity, and both of them are related to orgasm as well. Now furthermore, inside of the vestibule, surrounded by the labia minora, you actually can see two openings down here. So you have a more anterior opening, as well as a smaller opening, a more posterior opening, as well as a slightly larger opening. These two include the opening to the urethra, and the opening to the vagina. So this is a good thing to keep in mind that these are separate, as in like you have a urethral opening for urine, and then you have a vaginal opening for sex or intercourse. So these two are separate, and one thing I would like to make abundantly clear, like urine does not come out of the vagina. So although it's a little bit hard to see because it's a pretty small like structure, and honestly, I mean, it's kind of hard to see unless you're looking very closely. This is going to be the urethral opening where urine comes out. This is going to be the vaginal opening, which is for sex or intercourse. Now, furthermore, there's one more structure on this model that I would like to point out, which is this small little yellow structure over here. This is called the vestibular gland. So the vestibular gland is going to be secreting a lubricating substance into the vestibule, which is going to allow it to reduce friction during intercourse, during arousal. So, so far we had the labia minora, the clitoris, the urethral opening, the vaginal opening, and the vestibular gland. Now with this model done, let's also take a look at 
the mid-sagittal view, where you can see a lot of more of the internal structures instead. But once again, we need to orient ourselves. If you look closely, this is the pubic symphysis. And the pubic symphysis is where the two pubic bones meet, meaning that this is the anterior side, and this is where you also find the mons pubis. So the mons pubis, you can see like this is going to be a relatively kind of mm, substantial kind of mm, padding of fat. This is going to help with cushioning the pelvis during intercourse, but that means that this is the anterior side, while this is the posterior side where you see the butt. So you can see at least one of the butt cheeks here. Well, it's a little bit hard to tell, I guess, to an extent, but this is one of the butt cheeks. This is the posterior side with the butt. And then furthermore, just like we did last time, you can also see some digestive structures. So you have the anus, the internal anal sphincter, external anal sphincter, the levator ani muscle. But in this case, you can also see the rectum. All right, so with that said, though, let's take a look at some of the reproductive structures again. So on the outside of the female reproductive or the female reproductive system, you can see other parts of the external genitalia, including these two lips. So if you look closely, these are the two inner lips, the more medial and smaller of the two. These are called the labia minora. So we talked about that earlier. And remember, those are going to be covering the clitoris partially the urethral opening, which will be more anterior, and then the v vaginal opening, which will be more posterior. But you can also see more lateral and larger than the labia minora. This is called the labia majora. So labia minora, labia majora, and this is going to be a little bit kind of more fatty, a little bit more puffy, but furthermore, this is also going to be where hair growth can occur as well. So labia minora, are going to be the smaller and more medial. Labia major will be the larger and more lateral. But furthermore, just to also keep in mind, when I say labia minora and labia majora, those are the plural forms. The singular form of labia minora is labium minus, while the singular form of labia majora is labium magus. Now lastly, to kind of cover what we talked about last time, you also can see the vestibular gland here. So lateral to the labia minora, this is the vestibular gland on the posterior side between the female external genitalia as well as the anal sphincters. Now taking this off, we can see some more internal structures here as well. So once again though, labia majora, labia minora, clitoris even, but then what else do we see here? So we can still see the anal sphincters, but what do we see anterior to that? We have the urinary bladder with the urethra and the urethral opening. And then that means that this one posterior to it, this is the vaginal opening and the vagina. So the vaginal opening is then going to lead into kind of a tube-like structure. That's basically the vagina. So the vagina is going to be a tube-like structure that leads deeper into the female reproductive tract which will ultimately lead to the uterus. So the uterus is basically kind of like a muscular sac. And you'll be able to see that there are multiple layers to the uterus, which includes the endometrium, the inner layer, the myometrium, which is the muscular layer, and then the perimetrium, which is the outermost layer. But the uterus is going to be between the rectum and the urinary bladder, and you can see the uterus kind of mm, flops over a bit of the urinary bladder as well. So you can see that it's slightly superior and posterior. Now there is one more specific part of the uterus that you'll need to know, and that is called the cervix. So if you've ever heard of like cervical cancer or something of the like, you might know where the cervix would be because they take pap smears from this region. This right here, at the junction between the vagina and the uterus, this at the bottom, this is called the cervix. And the cervix is going to have a couple of things, which include the opening of the cervix, which is called the cervical os, and then you have the cervical canal. 
So this is going to be where sperm can potentially enter the uterus through. So from the vagina into the uterus, you have the cervical os as well as the cervical canal. So the bottom region here, this is the cervical or this is the cervix. This kind of major region up here, this is called the body of the uterus. And then at the top of the uterus, this is called the fundus of the uterus. So there are a few major regions, and this is going to be where potentially a fertilized oocyte can implant into to develop into an embryo and ultimately a baby. But to get to that, you actually have to have this pathway leading from the female gonad to the uterus. And if you look closely, you have a couple of structures over here. This right here is called the oviduct, otherwise known as the fallopian tube, otherwise known as the uterine tube. Please use the one in your lab manual. But this is the oviduct. You can see the fimbri, <coughs> the fimbri over here. And then at the end of the oviduct, do you see that kind of like tan structure? This small little structure is called the ovary. So this is where female hormones are going to be produced. This is where the female oocytes, or rather the female gametes, the oocytes will be stored. And we'll be taking a look at that in another video. So there's a lot more to talk about with the ovary, but that's basically the female reproductive tract. So an oocyte is going to be expelled during ovulation, picked up by the oviduct, and brought to the uterus. And just to be clear, like a lot of people think that fertilization occurs in the uterus, it actually occurs in the oviduct for the most part. Now, that's going to be the major structures of the female reproductive tract, but there are a few more things that I would like to point out here. So first of all, do you see these red and blue tubes? Like these are going to and from the ovary. Guess what these are called? These are called the ovar ovarian arteries and veins, but you may also know these as gonadal. So if you can tell that this is a female body, you can now say that this is the gonadal artery and vein, or sorry, you can say that this is the ovarian artery and vein instead of gonadal. But uh, what else do you see here? There are these structures connecting or supporting this, the female reproductive system as well. So from the uterus to the ovary, you have what's called the ovarian ligament. From the uterus to the, <coughs> to the pelvis, this is going to be called the round ligament. So this is going to be going towards the pelvis over here. And then you also have this very broad connective tissue covering everything. That's called the broad ligament. And then lastly, just remember, you can see other things here as well, such as the transverse abdominis, even potentially parts of the rectus abdominis, and then the psoas major, as well as blood vessels, like the common iliac artery and vein, or rather right common iliac artery and vein, right external iliac artery and vein, right internal iliac artery and vein as well. So... Definitely make sure that you can find these structures from a lot of different views, whether it's at the mid-sagittal cut, whether you have these different structures still on it, or whether you're looking at it from another model. Just make sure that everything is familiar to you, and definitely be careful. Look at the structures and all of its parts. But with that said, I think that's about it for today. So thank you for listening. Good luck with your studying, and I'll see you all next time.